Tonight we will discuss the fundamental laws, the basic policies governing labor relations, which is Book 5 of the Labor Code of the Philippines. Okay, so as you will see today, uh, tonight is our second meeting and uh, it is my assignment to give a lecture and I appreciate that most of you have submitted your analysis of the Philippine Airlines case. If you have uh, received my response to your uh, specific email I have given you grades already and uh, those are very important because first impression is lasting you have given me a first impression on the way you express yourself the way you follow instructions and the way you present your idea by following my template of Philcro. Philcro being fax issue, law applicable, case history, ruling, and your opinion. So without further uh, discussion, I will, I remind you that the title of our subject is Labor Relations. Take note of that, uh, relations. So it is plural. Plural. That means na maraming karelasyon. Maraming karelasyon. Hindi lang isa. It's, this is not just the relationship between employer and employee. There are many factors in the life of the employee that makes our subject complicated. Di ba ang relasyon, pag tatlo ang involved, complicated? Do you agree, Miss Aguilar? Miss Veronica Aguilar, do you agree that when the relationship involves three parties, it is complicated? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this is even more complicated because there will be many, not, more, not just three. Uh, later on, uh, we will uh, realize that the, um, the employee and the uh, employer has a relationship. So let us call employee number one. Then the employer is number two. The state is number three. The union is number four. And the federation is number five. So since the employee is in the middle of all these factors, these personalities, these uh, entity in in labor standards mostly it is the relationship between employee and employer with the state as a third party so the most in labor standards was the involvement of the state acting through the secretary of labor but here we will come across with many problems involving the unions as you have analyzed the Philippine Airlines case. The union was complaining that the employer issued a policy without consulting the employees through the union. So, doon palang apat ng involved doon eh, because there is the employee, the employer, the union, and the state. The state represented by the labor arbiter, the NLRC, then the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court uh, deciding the case of Philippine Airlines versus uh, uh, the union. Uh, versus NLRC and Philippine Airlines Employees Association. Palaya. Now, later on we will have the involvement of the Federation. 
because the Federation is a group of unions coming together to make their side stronger. And the state encourages the employee to unionize. It is the wish of the state that employees should come together, form themselves into a union because it is easier for the state to protect when they are unionized. That's why in, in Article 13, Section 3, there is a statement that the state shall afford full protection to labor, local or overseas, and we, we had a recruitment in labor standards. Then the next is organized or unorganized. What is the meaning of organized? That means you have a union. When you, when you hear the term organized, that means that the employees have a union. Unorganized, the employees are not unionized, or they are still in the process of unionizing, and the union has not been recognized as the sole and exclusive bargaining agent. So they are still unorganized. So. If you read Article 13, Section 3, the state shall afford full protection to labor, local or overseas, organized or unorganized. The state does not make a distinction. The mandate of the state to afford full protection to labor does not care if, the, if labor is in the Philippines or outside the Philippines or labor is unionized or not unionized. The state does not care. So I hope that you have copies of this book because I will make reference to this book tonight. And towards the end of our class tonight, I will call you or some of you to recite based on my lecture based on my lecture. So if you have difficulty listening, just say in the chat box that you do not, you do not have audio. You have video, but you do not have audio. So if you look at page 57 to 58 of your book, no, you can open it now, we have a definition of labor relations. Uh, definition of labor relations. Can you read it, Mr. Uh, Mabon? Uh, Mr. Mabon, can you read? You, you read from yeah. your book. Yes. Uh, um, labor relations is that, is that the branch of labor law comprising of statutes, policies, principles, and jurisprudence that deals with the rights of labor to self-organization, collective bargaining, peaceful concerted activities including the right to strike, participation in policy and decision-making processes affecting the rights and benefits and security of tenure, as well with prerogatives of employers to lay down and execute management policies, hire, transfer, suspend, recall, discharge, assign, or discipline employees, and also the powers and duties of the state to afford full protection to labor, local and overseas, organize and unorganized, promote the principles of shared responsibility between workers and employers, promote the preferential modes of voluntary use of settling labor disputes, including conflict alleviation and shall enforce their mutual compliance therewith to foster industrial peace and regulate the relations between workers and employers. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mabun. Uh, if you are asked to define labor relations and, and you are in a hurry, you just shortcut it by saying it's that branch of labor law that deals with rights of labor, prerogatives of employers, and the powers of the state. So that is the shorter version of the definition. Now. As to the rights of labor, 
there is a different enumeration of rights in labor relations as compared to labor standards. Because in labor standards, you also deal with rights of labor, but they are different set of rights, like the right to a living wage, the right to a humane conditions of work, the right to a just share in the fruits of production. Those are the rights that pertain to labor standards, including the right to full employment, the right to equal employment opportunities. Those are uh, pertaining to Book 1, Book 2, Book 3, and Book 4. But in labor relations, we start with Book 5, Book 6, and Book 7. And uh, this is just an overview of labor relations. Here in this subject, we will uh, analyze and scrutinize each and every right of labor. And the first right is the right to self-organization. It is the right to form, to assist, and to join. You know, tatlo yon, tatlo. Jaff, Jaff. The mnemonic device is Jaff. Join, assist, or form. When you join, assist, or form a labor organization, then you exercise your right to self-organization. Now, in the Bill of Rights, there is a freedom of association. And that is the mother of the right to self-organization because the, the freedom of association includes societies, associations, for purposes not contrary to law. But among the enumerated groups are societies, associations, and unions for purposes not contrary to law, shall not be abridged, no? The right of the people, in fact, in, fact, in Book 3, uh, in Article 3 of the Constitution, it is the people's right. But here, it is the right of labor. No? It is the right of workers. You have, if you are not a worker, you do not exercise the right to self-organization you exercise the freedom of association. Now, since manager, managerial employees are not allowed to exercise the right to self-organization, they would uh, join associations not for purposes of collective bargaining. Because what distinguishes the union from other association is that its main objective is collective bargaining. That is the second right. That is the economic objective of the union, collective bargaining. And the third is mutual aid and protection. And that is through peaceful concerted activity, including the right to strike in accordance with law. That's why in this subject, towards the middle of the semester, we will be discussing the right to strike. And we will be analyzing the cases where there were legal strikes, there were illegal strikes, and people, workers have lost their jobs because of illegal strike. And that is the state. Once the state comes in, Either the right has been exceeded, you exceed the bounds of your right because the rights of labor are not absolute. It is subject to certain conditions like the right to join union is subject to the condition that the purpose is not contrary to law. So, on the other hand, the employers have certain prerogatives to hire, fire, transfer, promote, lay off, discipline, to lay down policy, to execute management policy, and even to close the company, sell the company, enter into mergers and consolidation. These are the prerogatives of the employers. And do you know what? The prerogative of the employer, if you have already studied the law on property, the civil code, property, 
Oh, please answer. Pada pada rayon, have you taken up property? Not yet, sir. So, the property is a second year uh, law subject, di ba? Yes, sir. I left it, sir. So, uh, how about the others? Mr. Uh, Miss Owasan, have you studied property? Sir, I'm currently taking this semester. Yeah, when you own a property, you have the, the right to manage, to enjoy the fruits. You have the right to enjoy the use of the property. So, if you own the business, you have the right to choose the people to run the business to transfer them, to assign them, to discipline them. Therefore, the prerogatives of management, you should listen to this. All the prerogatives of management are based on the ownership of property. If you are the manager of a company, you represent the owners. And the owners have the right to use their property you are the one assigned to make decisions about the operation of the business or the leadership and management of people from hiring to retiring. And all these prerogatives are uh, provided by civil law and labor law, while the rights of labor are provided by the labor code and the constitution. That's why the rights of labor have primacy over the prerogatives because constitutional rights, these are labor's rights, are constitutional rights, whereas the prerogatives of the employers are only emanating from the law on property. Of course, they can also invoke Article 3, Section 1, that they cannot be deprived of their property without due process of law because the businessman is the owner of the business or the owner of the property. You cannot deprive the businessman of its prerogative to hire people, fire people, but they have to do it within the framework of the law. Our subject, therefore, is a balance, to balance between the rights and the prerogatives. And what is the balancing mechanism? It is the power of the state. The state is the balancing mechanism. I have always stated this and I'll repeat it tonight. The relationship between employee and employer is like husband and wife. And the state acting through the government is the mother-in-law. So, kung kayo, meron kayong mother-in-law, Ang papel talaga ng mother-in-law sa relationship ng, in, ng husband and wife can be summarized in one word. Interference or intervention. But the mother-in-law has a good intention. The mother-in-law wants to help. That's why the state wants to help in the relationship between labor and management. That's why you have heard the principle of parents patre that the state is the guardian of the welfare of the people and when you talk of people it is usually the workers. No? That's why social justice is the objective of the state to humanize the law and to equalize the social and economic forces so that justice in its most secular signification may at least be approximated pursuant to the time-honored principle of Salus Populi Suprema Est Lex that the welfare of labor, the welfare of the people is the supreme law. So, so far, uh, you should know that the powers and the duties of the state are mostly anchored on police power, the power to interfere, that the power to intervene, 
Because if you remember Article 1700 of the Civil Code, 1700, what does it say? It says that the relationship between labor and capital or between capital and labor is not merely contractual. It is imbued with public interest. That's why the state is authorized. It is the duty of the state to interfere, to promote the general welfare of the people, to equalize the forces, to set limits to the exercise of prerogatives, and also the exercise of rights. And if you remember, there is a Latin maxim which says, Sic oteri tuo, ut alienum non laidas. Do you know what is the meaning of that, Mr. Pineda? Sic oteri tuo, ut alienum non laidas. What is the meaning of that? If you don't know that... Oh. Ano, ano, uh, do you know the meaning, Mr. Pineda? Who knows? You can volunteer. Sic oteri tuo, ut alienum non laidas. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, use your right in a manner that does not violate the right of others. So, if you have the right to strike, do not exercise that right in, in a manner that will disturb the public order or uh, prejudice third party or uh, inflict uh, irreparable damage to the company by committing arson or physical injury, libel, or, or uh, malicious mischief in the course of uh, exercising the right to strike. Remember that, huh? the state is the balancer, the state is the regulator, the state will restrain any of the two, labor or management, that will exceed the bounds of his right or prerogative. Labor relations, precisely, is the subject that will create industrial peace by balancing between the rights of labor and the prerogatives of management. So, in your book, page 59 to 61, you will see what are the objectives of labor relations. The first objective is to achieve industrial peace. Well, uh, there was a time in our history, in 1980s, after the Edsa Revolution, after 20 years, from 1966 to 1986, there was massive uh, violation of human rights by a constitutional dictator. So all the opposition were put in prison, including Aquino, Tanyada, Jukno. And so after the Aitza Revolution, the rights have been, uh, which, has, which have been restrained for 20 years, have Suddenly, like a flood bursting from Adam, the, the rights of the workers have been maximized. And therefore, there was labor activism in 1986. That is the time when San Miguel Corporation uh, offered me a job, me being a former student activist. And I know how to deal with their KMU because I have been a demonstrator. I have been uh, uh, I have been wounded and scarred in demonstrations. I have been imprisoned. I have been put in detention. And so San Miguel was looking for a lawyer who who knows the language of KMU, and I was I because the purpose of labor relations is to achieve peace. 
Because if there is no peace, the foreign investors will not come. And if there are no foreign investors, there will be no job opportunities. And so it is important to the nation that we have industrial peace. Because if you are a businessman and every day your workers are on strike, how can you produce the goods and how can you sell them? How can you earn your revenue? The company will deteriorate. No? So the first purpose is industrial peace. The second is to promote social justice. Because if there are no unions, there are no collective bargaining. So the workers will just depend on minimum wage, which you learn in labor standards. So how can the workers, even if you work for 10 years, even if you work for 10 years and you only receive minimum wage, management is not duty bound to increase your salary. As long as management pays the minimum, management is complying with the law. But how, how can workers get higher pay and be better packages of benefits? How? It is through the union. Because once the union is registered by Dole, and once the union is supported by the majority of the employees and won in an election called certification election for purposes of certifying the winner, then once the winner is certified, it, it has the right to demand, not request, but demand from management. Management should sit down and negotiate with the union. And that is collective bargaining. What happens if management refuses to negotiate? Well, that is called unfair labor practice. And that is a ground for legal strike. So our subject is very exciting. It's not like labor standards. We just memorize the overtime pay, holiday pay. No, here. There is action, there is excitement, there is a collision of rights versus prerogative. There is a clash of power. So if every day we will be dealing with conflicts, dealing with conflicts and how to resolve this conflict within the framework of the law. The third purpose of labor relations is to protect labor. Because if labor is not protected, labor is powerless. Labor is without resources, without power, without influence. So it needs the nurturing, the protective concern of the parents patray. Labor is fragile, it is vulnerable, it is like a special child that needs special care and attention. So the state the state is is not neutral. Sabi nyo, sir, para yatang merong kinikilingan ang state. Natural. Ngayon pa lang, sasabihin ko na sa inyo, meron talagang kinikilingan ang state dito sa labor relations. Walang equal dito kasi ang, ang tingin dito, if you look at the Constitution, there is a mandate, the state shall afford full protection to labor. Meron bang mandate to protect employers or management? No. Why? Because they can protect themselves. They can hire high-caliber lawyers. They can hire top-notch managers, graduates of Harvard, Yale, Stanford, doctorate, master's degree, whereas labor needs the help of a caring, solicitous, and compassionate state. That's why labor relations also has the objective to protect labor. Kaya nga, meron ditong all doubts 
in the interpretation of the Labor Code and its implementing rules and regulation shall be resolved in favor of labor. So if the arbiter is in doubt, then labor will win the case. So that's why if you become a counsel or a lawyer for management, be sure that your evidence is superior, not just substantive, but it should be more, it should be overwhelming evidence, you know, so that the, the, the balance of justice will be tilted in favor of your client. Because if, if there is only uh, balance equal equal weight between your evidence and the evidence of labor that uh, conflict will be resolved in favor of labor that's why the the last uh, the uh, number pa, uh, labor relations is intended to show compassion not just protection but compassion that's why Kung ang isang empleyado connected with the company for 20 years, then he has been absent without official leave. After the COVID, there is already a relaxation of the quarantine. He can report, but he is afraid to report. And because of so many absences, the employer decided to terminate his services. But because of compassionate justice, because his only fault is absenteeism, he did not steal from the company, he should be paid for the 20 years, and that is separation pay. Or he should be allowed uh, early retirement uh, with payment for every year of service, because if he is now not doing well now, the law will not forget the early years of his career and employment where he has been hardworking, loyal, conscientious, and very, very effective as an employee. No? Pero kung nagnakaw yan, or nagpalsipay ng resibo, if the, if the offense is fraud, even if he has been there for 20 years, his dismissal will be allowed by law because the last principle is protecting labor is not meant to oppress capital. If, if you have an employee who is really a uh, habitual liar, always causing trouble, uh, always uh, stealing company property, always intriguing against the owner of management, always posting derogatory remark in the Facebook, uh, attacking, maligning the company, then there is just cause to terminate his services. Because to allow him to continue would be a virtual oppression of management. Because protection to labor does not mean that you have to commit injustice against the employer. Because the employer is the ghost that lays the golden egg. If you kill the ghost, there is no more egg. Even the workers will lose their job. If the employer will become bankrupt because of the uh, so many foolishness, so many offenses and misconduct committed by the employee. Okay, ito na. Can you see this on your screen, uh, Miss uh, Raton? Miss Raton, can you see that? Yes, sir. Oh, so that is on page 61 to 64. Do you have uh, a book, Miss Raton? None yet, po. Oh. Okay, ikaw, Mr. Padirayon. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, that is that is on page 61 to 64, and uh, these are the constitutional basis of the principle of labor law, and we will start with the preamble. Uh, the the preamble says the purpose 
the ultimate dream of the Filipino people, the sovereign Filipino people, is not just to establish a government, but to build a just and humane society. If you study the Constitution of 1935 and the Constitution of 1972, the objective in the preamble is to establish a government. There is no mention about building a society. So it is for the first time in the history that the objective of the Filipino people is not just to establish a government, but to build a just and humane society. So anong meaning yan? Magtatag tayo ng isang lipunang makatarungan at makatao. Makatarungan at makatao, just and humane. Kaya yung mga ginagawa ng mga uh, mga kurap na opisyal sa PhilHealth ay uh, hindi yan humane. Hindi yan humane because it, during the time of pandemic, billions na nilulustay nila na, na contribution ng mga manggagawa, kaya lahat sila tanggal. No? Lahat sila, lahat sila mananagot, plunder ang kaso nila. Because it is no longer building a just and humane society. And our subject, ladies and gentlemen, is an instrument to achieve the purpose of building a just and humane society. There can be no just and humane society if there is no labor standards and no labor relations. Labor relations is a means to achieve the end. To achieve the end, the end is building a society that is just and humane. Merong katarungan at merong ma makatao at makatarungan. Makatarungan at makatao. Yan ang objective ng labor law. Then, uh, can you read that, Mr. De Los Santos? Uh, that is the one that I want you to memorize. Uh, Article 13, Section 3. Can you read that? Or, if you have a book, you can read from your book, or if you can Google the Article 13, Section 3 of the Constitution, you can just read from your book or from your uh, codal provision of the Constitution. No? Because uh, this is uh, found in uh, 61 to 64 of your book. Okay. Can you find it? Okay. Please read it. The state shall afford full protection to labor, local and overseas, organize and unorganize, and promote full employment and quality of employment opportunities to work. He shall guarantee the rights of all workers to self-organization, collective bargaining, and negotiation, and peaceful concerted activities, including the right to strike in accordance with law. They shall be entitled to security of tenure, remain conditions of work, and a living wage. They shall also participate in policy and decision-making processes affecting their rights and benefits as may be provided by law. The state shall regulate the relations between the workers and the employers, recognizing the right of the employers. It's just share in the fruits of production and the right of enterprises, reasonable workers, and investments of expansion goals. Okay, so here in, in this article in the Constitution, uh, we have the enumeration of rights and uh, the, the only three rights guaranteed. Take note, huh? plus, if, you, if I ask you, what are the three rights that are guaranteed by the state? These are the right to self-organization, the right to collective bargaining and negotiation, 
and peaceful concerted action including the right to strike in accordance with law. So those are the only three rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution. Para bang sinabi ng Constitution, sinabi ng state, labor, akong bahala sa iyo. Akong bahala sa iyo, uh, palalakasin ko ang hanay ng mga manggagawa sa pamamagitan ng pag-uunyon, pagsama-sama, bibigyan kita ng batas, bibigyan kita ng proteksyon, huwag kang matakot, magsama-sama kayo, kasi kung nag-iisa ka lang ng manggagawa, madali ka lang magali mag, mag madali ka lang uh, lukuhin, madali ka lang na i-exploit, madali ka lang na takutin kasi nag-iisa ka. So, uh, by by forming a union, the state empowers. Uh, if you if you know the meaning of empowerment, uh, how how does the worker becomes empowered? It is unionism. And once they have a union, they can now demand for bargaining. Without a union, management is not obligated to bargain. And if there is a deadlock in collective bargaining, there are only two grounds for filing a strike notice. Deadlock in collective bargaining, that is the economic ground, or unfair labor practice when you refuse to bargain. At least yung deadlock, nakipag-bargain, pero hindi nakasundo. Kasi ang demand ng union, kapantay ay langit. Ang offer ng management, bato sa buhangin. So paano magsalubong yung langit at buhangin? Mag-demand ng union ng 5,000 increase every month. Ang offer ng management, 50 pesos lang. Oh, illegal ba yun? No, hindi yan illegal. Bargaining yan. No? So it's a process of ibaba mo yung demand mo at itaas ko yung offer ko hanggang magsalubong tayo. Pero pag hindi na talaga mag-move, ang tawag ngayon, deadlock. So uh, ano, ang, ano ang means to resolve the deadlock? Notice of strike. And the company also has the right to have a notice of lockout. Ano naman yung panlaban ng kumpanya? Lockout, ibig sabihin, I will close the company because I cannot afford the services or labor that you are demanding. You are demanding for the moon and the stars. And I am only able to afford a very limited means. No, So, there is a deadlock. And when there is a deadlock, and the workers stage a strike. And the strike is already uh, causing damage to third party. Can you imagine kung hospital ka, patapos we will go hang ka? Paano ngayon mga nurse nag we will go? So the state will take over, the state will assume, the secretary of labor will take over and say, all strikers go back to work. Management operate and then I will settle your dispute I will settle your dispute ang ikaw management ang offer mo 1,000 ang demand ng union 3,000 o sasabihin ng Department of Labor 2,000 na yun ang sundin yung dalawa maghati kayo sa gitna o, yan. that is arbitration arbitration by the Secretary of Labor or by the NLRC. And that is the state balancing. Do you follow? No? So far, uh, Miss, Miss Diasis, uh, are, are you learning? Are you learning from my, uh, from my explanation? Yes, sir. Very, very easy to have my explanation. Eh. Kasalanan na talaga ninyo pag hindi ninyo maintindihan. Oh, what is the prime duty of the government? What what is the reason for being? Why why do we have a government? The government is created by the people to serve and to protect the people. Sana susulat 'yan sa banal na saligang batas, Artikulo 2. 
Section 4, the prime duty of the government of consent, there was object, there was consideration. But, but, what makes it void if you disapprove? If you disapprove the resignation, that becomes void. It is not the contract that is void. It is the disapproval of the resignation. But to avoid and your enrichment, ikaw naman, Ms. Bilandres, you have to return. You have to return at least uh, three-fourth of 40,000. And that is 30,000. You return 30,000 because you serve only one-fourth of the total two years divided by six months. So, uh, the answer to that, Mr. Adan, is no, I cannot approve the resignation because if I do so, I would be compelling her to work against his will. And that is tantamount to involuntary servitude. However, since she, she accepted my money, she, have to, she has to return the money. Ang tandaan mo yan, Ms. Bilandres, kung ikaw, alimbawa, Ms. Bilandres, tumanggap ka ng regalo sa boyfriend mo, niregaluhan ka, tumanggap ka naman, tapos hiwalayan mo, isa ulay mo yung regalo. No? Kasi tinanggap mo, eh, umasa yung, baba, yung lalaki, so isa ulay mo para ibigay na naman niya yan sa ibang girlfriend niya pag uh, kumuha siya ng iba. Ganon lang ang buhay. Huwag ka namang uh, one-sided. Pero mo, umirma ka, nag-agree ka, tapos ngayon, aalis ka, dala-dala mo yung 40,000. O anong tawag sa'yo niyan? No? Anong comment mo, Ms. Bilandres, sa sinabi ko? Do you agree that you have to return a part of the money? Not all of that, kasi you have already served at uh, partially. No? Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, sir. I agree that I should return the, um, the three quarters of the money I receive because the law states that no one should be unjustly enriched at the expense of another. And not only that, Ms. Bilandresa, in Article 19 of the Civil Code, every person in the exercise of his right and in the performance of his duty must act with justice Give everyone his due and observe honesty and good faith. Oh, can you memorize that? Huh? Memorize mo yan. Kasi pag kumuha ka ng bar at naubusan na kayong katuwiran, yung, yung article 19 na yan, magamit ninyo yan sa lahat ng question sa bar. If you already lost, that is the only law that you can use in all subjects. Yeah, every person in the exercise of his right and in the performance of his duties must act with justice, give everyone his due, and observe honesty and good faith. Okay, Mr. Uh, Santos, uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Santos, can you read that? Do you have a book, Mr. Santos? Hindi kaya ata makarinig, Mr. Santos, eh. You cannot hear? Uh, Miss Ego Ogan, can you read that? Please read what is in your screen. Uh, I can see. I can see. Di ka makabasa? Sir, picture mo lang po. So, nawala na yung aking share? Okay. I will say share. Bakit nawala yun? Okay. 
when there is something wrong, uh, you tell me, especially the bedel, sabi mo na wala ka na, sir. Uh, okay. Which one? Oh, what's your name? Okay, what's your question? Not the un, not the entire money. It should be a proportionate to the the time that he has already served the company. Because if he has already served one half, he has to return one half. Now that agreement should be very clear at the very beginning. And then ikaw naman empleyado ka, you accepted it, so you have to honor your words. It's not illegal to do that. Kasi, you consider naman, Mr. Ms. Castiglion, kung ikaw ang employer, nagbigay ka ng malaking pera sa empleyado mo, nag-relocate. Tapos, after receiving, she does not honor her word. That's also unfair to you. Protection to labor should not mean oppression of capital. We have to be fair. Okay, Ms. Castiglion? Oh. Uh, Miss Igo Ogan, can you read that? Sabi mo na naman, picture ko nakita mo. May picture ba ako dyan? Miss, Miss Igo Ogan. Sir? Can you read that? Social services. A rising standard of. Okay. Now, in the a time of pandemic, the government is mandated to make sure that there is adequate social services like health, health services, ayuda, sa mga. Uh, mahihirap and uh, address the unemployment issue because millions of Filipinos are losing their job and uh, it is the duty of the state to promote uh, an, a social order that is dynamic and just. When we say dynamic, uh, that means that there is movement from one level, social status, to another. If you, are, if you belong to the poor, by initiative, at, by education, and whatever means, you can elevate yourself into the middle class, then you become uh, a part of the wealthy class. Just like what happened to uh, uh, Senator Villar, uh, Money billiard, no? Uh, galing siyang uh, nag, uh, nagbebenta ng isda sa tundo, kumuha siya ng CPA, naging accountant siya, nagtrabaho siya sa SGB, nagnegosyo siya, uh, nagsupply siya ng uh, sun and gravel, tapos nakita niya si Cynthia uh, Aguilar, and uh, doon na nag-umpisa ang, ang business 
expertise ni Manny Villar at ang mga assets ng mga Aguilar. Sobrang yaman ang mga Aguilar sa dami nilang lupa sa Las Piñas at saka sa Cavite. Ginawa nilang real estate company. At ngayon, uh, number one, the richest man in the Philippines is Manny Villar. And the richest senator is Cynthia Villar. Oh, that means that our so social order is dynamic because a poor a poor person can become very rich, not just middle class, but very rich. Just like Manny Pacquiao, very poor person, working as a construction worker, but because of his uh, of his uh, prowess as a boxing champion. He has become the second richest senator in the whole Philippines. Uh, he did not steal money from PhilHealth. He did not engage in corruption, just like Villar and Aguilar did not engage in corruption, but out of their own expertise, their brilliance, their uh, struggles, there is movement. When you say the the social order is dynamic, the word dynamo, or it 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 in uh, it means movement. It means uh, there is uh, energy. You can elevate yourself. You can uh, enhance your status in society. Yung iba naman para tumaas ang katayuan nila sa buhay. Ginagamit naman nila ang ganda nila. Kasi kung mahirap ka pero maganda ka, pwede kang mag-asawa ng mayaman, di ba? Kung mahirap yung... Mahirap ka na. Hindi ka pa nag-aral. Tapos hindi ka pa maganda. Yan ang pinakamahirap. Sabihin mo sa Panginoon, bakit wala naman akong dynamic social order? Hindi mo naman ako binigyan ng kunting grasya. No? Daming, ang daming uh, ganun ha. In the Philippine, Philippine history, there are a lot of people who moves from one social status to another. And the state is mandated to, to provide the environment for people to move. That's why we have agrarian reform. We have labor laws. Because these are the instruments by which the poor can achieve a level of a level of social and economic status. That's why social justice has been defined by Justice Laurel as uh, humanizing the law and equalizing the forces, huh? so that we can reach our dream to build a just and humane society. Tamo, ganda ng paliwanag natin. So, if there is a conflict, ikaw, Mr. Uh, 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 Miss Satrain, Miss Satrain, pag tinanong ka, ano bang nauna, ang manok o ang itlog? Uh, tanungin ka, ano ang nauna, Miss Satrain, ang labor o ang kapital? Sino ba ang nauna, ang labor o ang kapital? Oh, basahin mo, may sat, uh, may sa train. Basahin mo muna sa harap mo. Ha? Okay, so may sa train. Hindi na pagdidibatihin ngayon kung alin ang nauna, ang itlog ba ang manok. Nauna talaga ang labor sa kapital. Because labor is the creator of capital. Capital is just the result of labor. So when you see primary, nang gagaling yan sa Latin na primos, 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 prime. So pag primate, primero, ang ibig sabihin ng nangunguna, nauna, nauna ang labor. Ang sabi ng Article 2, Section 18. Na huwag na kayo magdebate kung sino ang nauna sa labor at kapital. Dinidesisyon na ng konstitusyon. It is already a settled issue that 
Labor takes precedence over capital because capital is just the product of labor. So as between the employer and the employee, if there is a conflict, the state will protect the employee because the employee is labor and the employer is capital. Oh, yan, yan ang ibig sabihin dyan. No? Miss Linaha, Stephanie, bakit hindi ka nagpapakita? Nagtatago ka sa dilim. Ano ba yan? Madilim ba yan? But, can you read that? Can you read that? Can you read the what? Okay. So, wala kang problem kung mabasa mo yan. Say, basahin mo. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is another provision. Uh, section 12, Article 12, Preferential Use of Filipino Labor. Uh, in your in your study of labor standards, you have come across with Article 40. Anong sinabi ng Article 40? Uh, Mr. Uh, um, Mr. Uh, Carlos Miguel Anong sinabi? Ang sinabi doon Alien Employment Permit Permit for Non-Resident Alien Can be given only if there is no Filipino Who is able, uh, competent, available, and willing to take the job So as between a foreigner and a Filipino, and they are competing for a job, the state shall give preference to the Filipino labor. So, in the case of General Milling versus Secretary of Labor, Tim Cohn was appointed as the coach of the Alaska team, which was owned by General Milling. Tim Cohn was given an alien employment permit by the regional director of the Dole. But the Filipino, the Association of Filipino Coaches, filed a protest. And on that basis, the Secretary of Labor canceled, canceled the permit issued to Tim Cohn. Therefore, General Milling, as the employer of Tim Cohn, went to the Supreme Court stating that the Secretary of Labor committed grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack of jurisdiction in uh, cancellation, in the cancellation of the Alien Employment Permit of Team Code. How did the Supreme Court rule on that? Do you know that Mr. Carlos Miguel, uh, do you know the ruling of the Supreme Court in the case of General Milling versus Secretary of Labor? Um, sir, I have, uh, I, have for, I have forgotten the name of the Supreme Court in that case. That is very important and that is the only case in Article 40. And uh, Pag sinabi mong I forgot, ibig sabihin na daanan mo, pero nakalimutan mo lang. Yes sir, what I can recall is that, uh, that, uh, that we, have, we, we have in the, the case uh, to apply for the permit. But uh, the permit was granted to them since they are they follow the elements under Article 4. 
Kaya nga, but, but the Supreme, uh, but the Dole cancelled it. And the, the question now is, was that cancellation a grave abuse of discretion? And the Supreme Court said no. Secretary Ruben Torres was only exercising the police power of the state and the secretary was only implementing this provision, the provision of preferential use of Filipinos. Kung ang mga Pilipino ay pinagkakaitan ng kanilang karapatan sa ibang bansa, dinidiscriminate, nilalait, dito pa kaya sa bansa natin, Ia-allow natin na ang sarili nating kalahe ay aagawan ng trabaho ng mga uh, ibang uh, nationality. The, it is the duty of the state. That's why here you will see the word is shall. So the state is mandated to promote the preference for labor and the Secretary of Labor would have been remiss in his duty to protect the Filipino labor had the Secretary allowed the alien employment permit issued to Tim Cohn without any act of cancelling. So, Mr. Uh, you should not forget that huh? next time. There are four provisions in the Philippines that cannot be exercised by aliens. And these are the lawyers, the doctors, the dentists, and the engineers. We are silent about nurses, silent about ophthalmologists or op optician, silent about other professions, but the Constitution is very clear that these four pro provisions should not be given to aliens. And these aliens cannot apply for alien empl employment permit if they are applying for the jobs of lawyers, doctors, dentists, and engineers. So if there are Korean engineer or uh, Japanese engineer working in Laguna, they are violating the law. They should be uh, stripped of their uh, uh, working visa because the law, the constitution itself is very clear on that. Okay. Is there any question before I go to the next topic? Protection to labor. Protection to labor. Wala ba kayong mga tanong? <coughs> I always admire students who ask questions. <coughs> Please identify yourself if you ask question. Which Aguilar? There are two kinds of Aguilar. Veronica. Huh? Ah, you are Veronica. Okay. What is your question? Yes. How come uh, uh, in our situation right now, in the circumstances, uh, we have right now, there is something like, how can we still the same uh, labor, still the social Well, that is not the fault of government. That is not the fault of the state. We are all victims by uh, a force beyond us. What is contemplated in the Constitution is to identify that when you have a choice between labor and capital, you should give primacy to labor. But if you are in a situation where both labor and capital, it's not just labor that is suffering now, 
business is also suffering. So, uh, this this uh, primacy of labor does not apply in our condition now, because both labor and capital are suffering under a pandemic COVID crisis. So, both of them needs the protection of the state to help. How how can we how can we help the business? Uh, go back to operate again when there is a very strong uh, a strong instruction to stay at home if there is a very strict lockdown on the one hand the workers also are not earning they, they, are, they are losing their job so if if the workers are losing their jobs, then uh, they are still, the, the, the concern of the state is still there. They are still given the primacy, even if they are losing their jobs. So that's why the state gives ayuda, the state uh, SSS, DOLE, they are, they are mandated to give uh, uh, some assistance, cash assistance, because that is the way by which the state uh, establishes the primacy of labor. Now, hindi nawawala ang primacy kahit na sa COVID crisis tayo, Ms. Aguilar. At hindi nagkulang ang state or ang government uh, with the limited resources of government still hindi pinababayaan ang mga manggagawa. But of course, kulang tayo ng resources eh. So, kung maiksi ang kumot, matuto tayong mamaluktot. I don't know if you understand that because you belong to a rich family. no? But for the poor people, uh, ang problema mo kasi, Miss Aguilar, yung Paano pag-maintain ng weight mo? Yun, yun ang problema mo lang eh. Sa buhay, nakikita ko eh. Hindi, hindi yung ibang tao ang problema nila. Kung may bigas ba sila, kakainin. So iba yung mundo mo sa mundo ng mga manggagawa. Kasi ang mga manggagawa, they still need the concern, the, the protection of the state. Miss Aguilar, do you have a book? Miss Aguilar? Yes, sir. Uh, please open your book to page 174. All of you, page 174. The state's protection to labor. No? Uh, the state's protection to labor. Uh, Miss uh, Alejandra Alejandres Ramos. Miss Ramos, are you here? Yes, sir. Uh, do you have a book, page 174? Yes, sir. So, there are five dimensions of protection to labor. No? So, uh, the first, the state protects labor from the abuses of the employers. Uh, you read uh, article 175. Ah, uh, no, page 175. Uh, the state first, the state protects labor. Can you read that? Yes, sir. First, the state protects labor from the abuses of employers and promotes its rights to the rights of the employees. Second, the state protects labor from the abuses of employers and promotes its rights to the rights of the employees. Third, the state protects labor from the abuses of employers and promotes its rights to the rights of the employees. Fourth, the state protects labor from the abuses of employers and promotes its rights to the rights of the employees. Fifth, the state protects labor from the abuses of employers and promotes its rights to the rights of the employees. Sixth, the state protects labor from the abuses of employers and promotes its rights to the rights of the employees. Seventh, the state protects labor from the abuses of employers and promotes its rights to the rights of the employees. Eighth, the state protects labor from the abuses of employers and promotes its rights to the rights of the employees. Ninth, the state protects labor from the abuses of employers and promotes its rights to the rights of the employees. Tenth, the state protects labor from the abuses of employers and promotes its
and he grades the work for each class that he does by each step of the between science and school spectators torture between compromises and schedule. Okay, so uh, dito, I will explain this. Huh? I will explain the five protection. Uh, in the midterm examination, I will ask you, explain the five dimension of protection. Uh, usually, kasi the, the students just believe that when, when we talk of protection, we only think of protecting against the employer. So, tanungin mo yung mga estudyante uh, when uh, tanungin what do you what do you think when we think of protection to labor what comes to your mind what comes to your mind when we when we mention the phrase protecting labor ang answer usually ganito it's always the employer protecting the employee from the employer because the employer is the more dominant the more dominant party to the relationship do you know why miss ramos because the one that has the power the money the resources will always be the one that is dominant Kaya ikaw, Ms. Ramos, kung ikaw, halimbawa, mag-asawa ka ng mayaman, sobrang yaman na lalaki, kahit ikaw, kahit sobrang mong ganda, andyan ka talaga sa husband mo. Kasi siya mag-decision ng lahat eh. Uh, kung sino yung may power, kung sino yung may pera, siya may power eh. Yan ang, ang prinsipyo dyan. He who owns the gold. Alam mo ba, Ms. Ramos, yung golden rule? Uh, may bagong golden rule eh. Ang golden rule ngayon Hindi na yung do unto others eh. Ang golden rule ngayon is He who owns the gold Makes the rules uh, So kung sino yung mayaman Yun ang masusunod Kung ikaw wala kang trabaho Ang husband mo matrabaho Sumunod ka sa husband mo no? Pero kung ikaw ang mayaman Kung ikaw mayaman, ang husband mo guwapo lang, hindi mayaman, eh susunod lang siya sa'yo. Oh, ganon lang ang buhay. So dito sa employer and employee, the one who has the power is the employer. So there is a tendency on the part of the employer to abuse. Huh? There is a tendency on the part of the employer to abuse its authority like prerogative prerogative to transfer prerogative to promote promote pre, prerogative to uh, assign to discipline minsan ang mga employer sumusobra na sa kanilang prerogatives so the law the law protects the employees from the excessive and uh, out of bounds yung mga excessive exercise of prerogatives that is the meaning of that labor relations therefore is a law that makes sure that the employer would not abuse its prerogatives because the employer has the influence the power the logistics, the resources, they have better knowledge, they are more uh, powerful, they are more knowledgeable, they are more influential, therefore the state will balance. Balik ka doon sa definition of social justice, humanize the law and equalize the forces because the forces are not equal. No? The second one is protect labor from their unions. Because later on you will you will realize plus you will re realize in when we come into the next topics that the unions sometimes are also abusing. They collect too much money from the members and those 
members who are not very active, they commit injustice by asking management to uh, to inflict some act that are unfair to the employee. For instance, sabi ng union officials, ayaw namin yung tao na yan, kahit membro namin yan, kasi uh, may ambisyon siyang labanan kami sa sunod na eleksyon ng union. So, sir, pwede bang ilipat mo yan sa Sultan Kudarat? That, that action is unfair labor practice. When the union the union can also be guilty of unfair labor practice against their own members when they use the power of management to commit an unjust act against an individual member the state will come to protect the individual member as against their own union number three protect labor against the government officials. May mga government officials na uh, dinadaan sa teknikalidad yung mga pagdidesisyon ng kaso. And the labor code is very clear. You will realize when we come into book 5 that technical rules are not binding. What you study in the rules of court would be applicable to civil litigation and criminal litigation but in labor litigation even an oral testimony uh, ang worker ang kanyang ebidensya oral testimony lang ang kalaban niya yung management uh, document and yet if the dole if the arbiter would believe the oral testimony the oral testimony would be given more weight than the document and that is that happens only in labor cases because in civil cases there are there are there is uh, what is called uh, the best evidence rule the parole evidence rule when you reach the senior years you will study evidence or third year evidence there is a subject called evidence where you will study how to appreciate documents how to appreciate testimony. Now, these rules are not going to apply in labor cases. Kaya, ang, ang Estado, the state, protects labor from government. And the labor arbiter is given a deadline. He cannot delay and delay the case. He has to decide the case one way or another. And that is another protection for the employees. Uh, kung ikaw, Miss Pacoma, mag-file ka ng kaso laban sa employer mo, and uh, natalo ka, dinismiss ang kaso mo sa labor arbiter, mag-file ka ng appeal to the NLRC, wala kang bayaran na appeal ban. Pero pag ang employer ang natalo, the employer must pay an appeal ban. So there is a favorable treatment for labor in appeals and in litigation. The rules are, uh, are uh, so formulated to favor labor. For instance, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Bellio, apelido mo na si Secretary Bellio. Are you related to Secretary Bellio? Uh, taga Isabela siya eh. From where are you? Uh, okay. Dapat inamin mo na lang na kamag-anak mo. No. Okay. Okay. Alam mo, Ms. Bellio, doon sa batas ng Republic Act 8042 and 10022. This is the Migrant Workers Act under the amendment. Uh, if you are an OFW, Miss Bellio, and you are from Cavite, you were recruited in Manila, and you were a victim of illegal recruitment, 
you have a choice whether to file the case in Cavite or in Manila. And uh, the recruiters asked the Supreme Court to nullify that provision of uh, Republic Act 8042 because uh, they are saying that it is unfair to the respondent. Can you imagine if you are from Mindanao, uh, you can file a case in Mindanao and then the recruiter is in Manila. He has to travel to Mindanao to face the case. But that is a choice that is given, given to the workers because the state shall protect labor not only against the employer but also against the government. The government does not have to require you to file your case where you were recruited in Manila because that is the place where the cause of action took place but you have a choice to file it in your hometown that is an, a clear example of protecting labor against the technicalities of government okay you understand that Ms. Bilyo? okay the fourth one is protect the workers from lawyers Lawyers, bakit? May mga abogado na lapitan ng mga manggagawa, uh, hihingi ang kagad nila ng acceptance fee. Ikaw, Mr. Attorney Batong Bakal, halimbawa ikaw ay maging successful lawyer ka, bar top notcher ka, nilapitan ka ng isang mahirap na manggagawa, tapos sabi niya, sabi ni Attorney Batong Bakal, Mahirap maging abogado, mahal ang libro, mahal ang tuition, dapat magbayad ka. Eh sir, wala kong pambayad sa iyo. Kung ano lang ang manalo tayo, eh bahala ka na, hatiin mo yung makuha ko sa iyo kalahati. Ngayon, pinapirma mo ngayon yung manggagawa ng ganong agreement. Alam mo ba, Atty. Batang Bakal, nasaan ka? Nawala ka Atorne Batang Bakal, pag ginawa mo yan, madidisbar ka. Why? Because that is an unethical uh, practice. The law protect labor from unethical lawyers. Yung mga lawyer na nagtitake advantage ng kanilang superior knowledge in law, papipirmahin lang yung mga mga mangmang na mga manggagawa na hindi naintindihan yung dokumento, ginawa ng abogado, that is a very grave offense, violation of the canons of legal ethics. I'm also teaching that subject in another university, yung legal ethics. So be careful when you become a lawyer. You cannot even refuse to help a person by reason of money. Na hindi mo siya tutulungan kasi wala siyang pambayad. No? Bawal yan. Okay? Okay, the last one, uh, protect the protect labor from labor's own ignorance. Example, ang isang manggagawa ay pumirma ng resignation kasi tinakot siya uh, Mr. Cesar Perez, if you do not resign, I will fire you. I will file a case of uh, estafa against you because you got a cash advance and it has been one year and you have not liquidated. You do not return the money. So natakot naman si Mr. Perez. Nagpile siya ng resignation. That resignation is null and void because consent was not freely given. Or yung mga innocenting tao na construction worker na halos hindi marunong pumirma, pinapirma mo ng quit claim, waiving his right na i-hire kita pero 12 hours ang trabaho dito, walang overtime, security guard. 8 hours lang ang sweldo mo araw-araw pero magtrabaho ka 12 hours. Pero ang kinokobra ng agency doon sa pinagtrabahoan niya is 
work for 12 hours ang ang pinasahod sa empli sa security guard is only 8 hours pumirma naman ang security guard kasi wala naman siyang wala siyang bargaining leverage wala siyang trabaho at saka hindi naman siya nakatapos ng kolehiyo so that's the only way now later on later on nagfile siya ng kaso claim for overtime pay pwede bang uh, pwede bang sabihin na may agreement naman tayo uh, pinirmahan mo na magtrabaho ka 12 hours o walang overtime that agreement is null and void the state protects labor from labor's own ignorance lack of foresight lack of skill recklessness and imprudence in signing documents that they do not understand do you follow what i say are you following what i am explaining to you yes yes sir yan ito nasa page 64 to 66 of your book yan yan ang sinabi ko kanina article 19 of the civil code that is the law that will apply in all subjects. When you have a right and or you have a duty, you must remember to act with justice. And you should give the other party what is due to him. Wag kang manlamang. Wag kang uh, uh, mandaya. Huwag mong, uh, huwag mong i-take advantage yung superior strength mo, yung superior knowledge mo. Because the state will come to annul whatever action you have done which violates the very basic principle of human relation. And you should observe honesty and you must act in good faith. What is good faith? That means... You have no hidden agenda. You have no evil intention. You, you, you are transparent because your heart is pure. Wala kang tinatago na masamang hangarin. Kaya yung bad faith, mala faith. Yung uh, pagdating ninyo sa obligation and contract, sa sales, Meron diyang uh, buyer in bad faith. Buyer in bad faith. Comprador de mala fe. Comprador de mala fe. You are buying. May, bumili ka ng isang, uh, isang uh, motorsiklo sa isang tao na hindi mo kilala. Murang-mura lang. Yung pala ninakaw niya yun. And you are now the holder of a stolen property. You are presumed to be the thief. Because you are a buyer in bad faith. You are a buyer in bad faith. You are not a buyer in good faith. Comprador di buena fe. Pag good faith is buena fe. Pag bad faith is mala fe. Comprador di mala fe. Oh, ito. Can you read that, uh, Miss Rostia? You know, Miss Rostia and uh, the whole class, I'm telling you, from 1950 to 1974, there was no labor code. It was the civil code. And this is the provision of the civil code that governed. But starting 1974, this provision of the civil code is reinforced and the more compelling 
applicable law is the labor code because the civil code is a general law. The labor code is a special law. And the labor code is a law that is later, 1974. Civil code is 1950. But this, this pre principle still applies. But it is made more stronger. Stronger. It is made stronger by the labor code. That is why uh, we now come to the first provision of Book 5. The first provision of labor, uh, of labor relations because labor relations starts with Book 5 and this is in page 66 to 67 of your book. No? Can you read that, uh, Mr. Uh, Bindibil? First, to promote and emphasize the privacy, free collective bargaining and negotiations, including voluntary arbitration, mediation, and conciliation of schools of sending labor or industrial disputes. Second, would be to promote free trade unionism as an instrument for the enhancement of democracy and the promotion of social justice and development. Third, would be to foster the free and voluntary organization of a strong and united labor Fourth, would be to promote the enlightenment of workers concerning their rights and obligations as member, as union members and as employees. And the fifth would be to provide an adequate administrative machinery for the expeditious settlement of labor for industrial nations. Okay, to tuloy mo na yan. Sixth, to ensure a stable but economic and just industrial peace. Seventh, would be to to ensure the participation of workers in, in decision and policy making processes affecting their rights to peace and welfare. Yeah. Uh, letter B, uh, to encourage the truly de de democratic method of regulating the relations between the employers and the employees by means of agreements freely entered into the collective bargaining. No court or administrative agency or official shall have the power to set or fix wages rates of pay, hours of work, and other terms and conditions of employment, except as otherwise provided under this, this code. This code. Okay, that means dito, Mr. Bindibil, na yung mga civil court, yung mga RTC, MTC, di sila dapat makialam pag labor case. Ang labor case, pabayaan nila yan. Wag silang makialam. That is not within their jurisdiction. No? I'll explain this very briefly and you please listen to this because uh, you know usually when I ask question it's always explanation. Explain. I do not like to ask questions that are objective, memorize, enumerate. I don't like that. I want to know what is in your mind and how do you express yourself? So if I explain this one by one, you better listen because I will expect you later on to be able to explain this. No? Okay, we will start with the first the first policy. What is a policy? A policy is a standard of decision making and action. It is an established pattern of decision making. A policy is, is a more far-reaching and long-term in effect, not like a tactical decision or a procedure which can be changed. The procedure should follow the policy. The policy is an standard established manner of making decision. So, when you say the in the Constitution, there is a declaration of principle and state policy. Here in, in labor relations, 
we start with a policy. And number one is emphasize, promote and emphasize the primacy. Pangalawa na nating word na primacy yan kanina, the primacy of labor against capital. Nasa constitution yan, sa declaration of policy, sa Article 2 ng Constitution. Ngayon, dito sa Article 218, as renumbered, sinabi dito na primacy of free collective bargaining. What do you mean? Pag, pag sinabi mo, Mr. Bindibel, na primacy, primos, ibig sabihin, nangunguna siya at meron siyang segundo. Pag primo, primo is first. Segundo is second. So, the first is pre-collective bargaining, the second is compulsory arbitration. Big sabihin, ang pre-collective bargaining is free enterprise. Allow labor and management to negotiate. Pre-enterprise means the state should restrain itself. So, parang maghasawa yan, huwag ka makialam ginan ka stay ka lang sa malayo-layo pag nagsalpukan sa kakal lumapit kasi nagpataya na so in a pre-collective bargaining labor and management should be allowed maximum opportunity to settle their own dispute nakuha niyo yan do you do you follow alam niyo i'll tell you something Ngayon maglalaban si Trump at saka si Joe Biden. Kung kayo, matalino kayo, magaling kayo mag-research, dapat magtanong kayo, ano bang kaibahan ng Republican at Democrat? May kaibahan yan eh. Ideological yung kaibahan nila eh. Hindi, hindi pareho sa Pilipinas na lahat ng partido pareho lang. Parehong... Uh, trapo, mga traditional politician gusto magpayaman, gusto barabing power, pareho-pareho sila lahat doon sa Amerika, iba pag pagka, pagka Republican ka naniniwala ka sa free collective bargaining, free enterprise so ibig sabihin kanya-kanya tayong kayod kung matalino ka at magaling kang dubiskarte, yayaman ka yan ang mga Republican pero yung compulsory arbit arbitration yung bang binibaby yung mga tamad binibaby yung mga yung mga of course um, tayo mga Pilipino lagi tayong demokrate eh. sa Hawaii laging demokrat California demokrat kasi the policy of democrat is to help the poor to help the powerless no gana para parang constitution ng Philippines eh, to to protect labor pero in a free enterprise in a free collective bargaining haya mo sila kung ma mahina silang dumiskarte di magiging mahirap sila ganun yun so ang mga republican ayaw nila ng big taxes ayaw nila magkobra ng big taxes kasi ang republican is the party for the businessmen Ang Democrat is the party for the labor. So karamahan ng mga itim, karamahan ng mga Mexicano, karamahan ng mga labor, Democrat talaga sila. Pero yung mga mga Hudeo, yung mga miari ng mga banko, Republican sila kasi they want a government that will allow free enterprise. So ganito na rin yan dito sa declaration of policy natin. Ang itong labor code Ang gusto lang talaga ng labor code sana kung masunod tong policy na ito na alisin na yung batas ng minimum wage kasi ang batas ng minimum wage dinidiktahan mo na ang sahod ng tao kailangan kailangan by uh, 537 a day or 600 whatever no There are three kinds of labor unions in the Philippines. Are you aware of that? The, the, the left, the right, and the center. Pag sinabing left, ito yung mga KMU. Ito yung mga 
laging bumabati ko sa gobyerno kahit sinong nakaupo sa gobyerno bati ko sila kasi they are the disgruntled sector on society sila yung mga walang lupa, walang bahay sila yung mga walang malinaw na trabaho sila yung umaasa sa ayuda so siyempre they are uh, they are the disgruntled sector in society So sila yung magki-create talaga ng trouble, ng chaos kasi you you are uh, homeless, no? You are jobless. So how can you how can you be happy in society? So if you are not happy in your life, you will create trouble, no? So sila yung mga nasa left, ang mga nasa right, itong TUCP, Trade Union Congress of the Philippines. Ito yung mga union na pro-American. Kasi ang left kasi, itong KMU is pro-Russia and pro-China. No? So, sino yung nasa center? Ito yung mga union na inorganize ng mga Catholic Church, sa mga Jesuit. Ito yung Federation of Free Workers na ang founder niyan ay mga pari sa Ateneo. No? Ngayon, if you remember, if you remember your history, kung kayo talaga magaling kayong manaliksik, research kayo sa totoo. During the time of Karl Marx sa Industrial Revolution in the 18th century, na papunta na sa 19th century, nung naimbento na ang mga makina, nagkaroon na ng mga factory. No? Pagka, nang naimbento na na ang mga makina, wala na tayo sa agrikultura, nasa industrial na tayo. Kaya nagkaroon ng industrial revolution. So, ang mga kapitalista, pinapatrabaho nila ang mga workers for 18 hours a day, walang overtime mga minor, mga children pinapatrabaho pagkatapos ang working conditions are uh, uh, punong-puno ng pollution, noise walang protection walang health, safety and welfare walang labor code no? walang labor code kawawa ang mga manggagawa kaya, ano nangyari? E, da, na, nagtayo ng communist party si Karl Marx at saka si Frederick Engels na nag, nagtayo sila ng communist manifesto kasi lalabanan nila yung right so magsalpo ka na yung left at saka right anong ginawa ng katoliko Pope Leo XII or Leo XI na nagpalabas siya ng Rerum Novarum dapat isulat nyo yan kasi pwede ninyong i-google yan eh. What is Rerum Novarum? That is a papal encyclical. Yung bang mahabang sulat and parang thesis na ginawa ng Santo Papa. And he has a message to the world, a message to the whole Christian doom. Ang Rerum Novarum ay yan ang, yan ang original na diyan nang gagaling ang original word na social justice. Kasi noong araw, walang word na social justice eh. Ang justice noong, criminal justice, no? civil justice, political justice, pero walang social justice. So, kaya sinabi ni Justice Laurel sa Talalang versus William, na itong social justice, huwag kayong matakot kasi hindi ito communism. Hindi ito left, hindi rin ito atomism, hindi ito right. Ano ito? Centrist ito eh. This is the centrist approach. Itong labor law sa Pilipinas is a centrist approach. This is to equalize kasi hindi equally. This is to humanize kasi hindi makatao. Kaya ang nilagay sa, sa preamble is just and humane. Kasi importante ang hustisya. Importante ang makatao. Humane. So, labor law, social legislation, labor standard, labor relations, these are 
kung kayo maging abogado at you specialize dito sa labor law, mas madali kayo makapunta sa langit. Bakit? Kasi you are the instrument. The instrument. You are the apostle that will promote social justice. And labor law is one of the means and a very effective means to promote social justice. Justice for the people. Makataru, uh, katarungang pan, panlipunan. Katarungang pang tao. No? Hindi ito katarungan sa mga kriminal. Kriminal law yan. Memorize sa inyo yung justifying, exempting, mitigating, aggravating. Memorize sa inyo yung impossible crime. Lahat na yan. Pero ito, labor law. Out of the 110 million Filipinos, ilan ang apiktado ng labor law? Lahat. Kasi kahit 40 million lang ang nasa labor force, lahat ay umaasa. Doon kumukuha ng livelihood. When you say, no person shall be deprived of his life, liberty or property, this is not just property. This is life because pagka tinanggalan ka ng kabuhayan, tinanggalan ka rin ng buhay. So, labor law is life. Tandaan nyo yan. Huh? Kaya ako seryoso dito eh. Oh, do you have any question? Before I proceed? Para naman uh, punta mo na tayo sa bago tayo dito sa rights. Let us go to the definition. May definition dito eh. Yung mga definition of terms uh, dito, tatawagin mo kayo isa-isa ha, para basahin lang ninyo, no? nasa page 66 to 67 naman ito eh. uh, Definition of terms, uh, hindi pala 66 to 67. Uh, because we have to be, uh, we have to, be familiar with the terms. Okay? Ito ang uh, mga sinasabi ko dito. Ako na lang muna magpaliwanag. Later on na lang ito. Ha? Itong sa page 70. LLO. And you see that uh, word LLO? Can you say that? Kasi, pwede yan eh, yung, uh, there is a, a meaning of the word LLO is Legitimate Labor Organization. A union that is registered with the government becomes an LLO. So if you are a union and you are not registered with the uh, the Department of Labor, you are not an LLO. And if you are not an LLO, you do not have juridical personality. If you do not have juridical personality, you cannot file a case in behalf of your member. You do not have a standing in court. Uh, you do not exist in the eyes of the law. So it is important that you must be an LLO because an LLO uh, is a juridical personality and he can own property. No, I will stop here and I look for the other uh, uh, materials that I have where uh, there is a very clear uh, a very clear uh, explanation of what is an LLO. No? An LLO. An LLO is a union that is 
registered with Dole. A union that is not registered with Dole is just a union without an LLO. It's, it's a union, uh, but it does not exist in the eyes of the law. So, it is important that a union attain the status of an LLO. The next one is SEBA. No, I want to show you, uh, show to you something. No, uh, uh, what is a SEBA? It is uh, the union that wins, wins, nanalo sa certification election is called a SEBA. A SEBA uh, is the acronym of Sole and Exclusive Bargaining Agent. It is the agent that will bargain with management, bargain for uh, collective bargaining for better terms and conditions of employment. This is uh, page 70. The meaning of SEBA is sole and exclusive bargaining agent, meaning uh, the, the union, after registering, has won in the certification election because uh, there are many other unions uh, competing to represent the workers. Let us imagine a company with uh, 100 employees. To form a union, you need only 20%. So if you have 100 employees, uh, these are all rank and file because we do not count the managers, we do not count the supervisors. The supervisors are not allowed to join the union of the rank and file. So, uh, if uh, there are 100 employees, you need 20 to form a union. Uh, do you understand? Are you following me? So, if you need if you only need 20 to form a union, it's possible that there are five unions in one company. And these five unions will have to fight because if they are all registered, the five unions are, co are all LLO. They are all LLO, but none is a SEBA. So, the, the company will not the management will not negotiate with five unions. The company will say, you have to decide which of the five unions will become the SEBA. So that means that some other unions, they have to, uh, uh, they have to collaborate because if, if they are only 20, they cannot win because you need, you, you need 51 votes to win. So how can you win uh, with only 20 uh, members? So at least three, three of the five unions should uh, uh, combine their forces, uh, have a united front to fight the other two. And if they will get 51 votes in the certification election, that, that winner will become the SEBA. And when you become a SEBA, when you become a SEBA, you will represent the all the four hundred, uh, the all the one hundred. Okay? So, tana tana tatangin nyo. Anong tawag doon sir sa one hundred? Ang tawag sa one hundred ay abu, abu, appropriate bargaining unit. So, in one abu, it is possible that there are five unions. It is also possible that there is only one union. So pag isang union lang, walang hindi masyadong problema. Ang problema dyan, kung maraming union, hindi pwede ang management is not duty-bound to negotiate with all the unions. There must only be one. Kaya ang tawag sole 
an exclusive bargaining agent. So once once the seba is chosen, then then the union that seba can compel the company to sit down with them and negotiate. And the the uh, result of the negotiation is a contract which is called CBA, Collective Bargaining Agreement. And the CBA will have a lifetime of five years. Five years. 